All right, hello, welcome back to Assassin's Creed Black Flag. We find ourselves in Kingston, newly in Kingston, and you know what that means. We're about to be collecting a whole lot of stuff here in Kingston. Kingston's a uh, kind of larger, comparable maybe a bit to Havana bigger but uh, anyways let's learn a little bit about Kingston in 1692 devastating earthquakes destroyed Port Royal Jamaica's major city at the time in desperation refugees assembled nearby in a tent city that was eventually to become Kingston in 1703 what was left of Port Royal was burnt to the ground by pirates and Kingston quickly grew to become a major city in its own right today it is a diverse sprawling and raucous city far from the resorts on the north of the island now that we're all up to date on what Kingston's like we can go after the fragments and everything else that Kingston hides from us. Here we stumble upon a warehouse for a plantation. We're going to, uh, we're going to avoid this for a minute here and continue on with what we're doing currently. What we're doing currently is attempting to get up to that viewpoint. There we go, we finally made it up the wall. There's guards patrolling everywhere. Might as well get a good vantage point here. But we run into the sugar mill. Sugar cane was introduced to the Caribbean basin by Christopher Columbus. It thrived throughout the islands. Indigenous Tianos in Cuba were conscripted to harvest the cane. Once harvested, the cane was taken to sugar mills to be washed, shredded, then repeatedly crushed to produce sugar. Uh, note, Columbus was quite the entrepreneur, ML, and like Henry Ford, after him, it's hard to say whether his influence was a net positive or negative DM. Next up, we can learn about some fauna that we missed earlier. The great white shark, the largest predatory fish in the world, the great white lethal aspect is due to its nearly 300 serrated teeth arranged in rows. Great whites have been known to attack humans, but usually more out of curiosity than hunger. Simple biting and then releasing their victims. The great white reaches an average length of 15 feet or 4.6 meters. Note, go with more bull sharks. They're deadlier. ML. Anyways, now that we're all... Very, very smart. Uh, we can climb up this. And take a little aerial view in of the plantation. After this, we retrieve a treasure chest nearby. But leaving, we would cross straight through the plantation. And using our eagle vision, we can spot the key holder not too far away. So we might as well get this done. We can hide in this nearby bush and uh, use our sleep darts to put as many guards as we can to sleep. Stay with the 
hopefully not being noticed by the key holder himself. Sleep time. Oh gosh. Okay. Is that it? Let's search him. Uh, more? Ow, dude. These guys are all waking up. Okay, come on, let's do this quick. Oh my gosh. I have lots of these. I'll keep going. Come on. Finally, we got it. Alright. Stop you! No, I'd rather not thank you. Bye. Don't check the hay bill. Bye. <laughs> that guy didn't notice anything. He's joining his partner now. I like the other game where he uh, covered their mouth. These guys would definitely scream. Anyways, after a while of messing with the guards, putting them to sleep, we can finally get to the door. And no bells were rung. So that's a 750 real bonus. And our tidy little sum of goods. And we're out of here. And it's back to collecting. After a while of collecting, we can head to this windmill, which incidentally has a database entry attached to it. Water mills are a more reliable and more efficient technology than windmills, but regions such as islands of the Bahamas and the Caribbean, lacking rivers often turned to wind power especially in the 1700s when windmill construction became well understood interesting climbing top uh, to the top of this bad boy we can uh, get a good bird's eye view of our surroundings That one gave us a nice little view. Not long after the windmill, we find ourselves in another restricted area. Trying to save some hosti hostages and uh, locate another key for a warehouse. And lucky for us, they're all in the same location. Hopefully, nobody notices our actions. We can make this quick. We free the, the victims, but unfortunately, we don't get away with stealing the key. And we need to fight our way out of this situation. After all that's done, we can loot the key and continue on our merry way. First, we collect this treasure chest. Then we're off. We make a beeline almost straight for the warehouse until somebody notices us, and now we have to hide. Let's make sure they don't set off any alarms. And there we are. Another nice little stash for us. I didn't hear any bells, but maybe one was set off and I just didn't notice. Anyways, we'll move on from here. Next, we find ourselves at nighttime, sinking with another viewpoint at the top of a tower. And yet again, we find ourselves on another tower, this time a church tower.
So I was thinking, this one seems a lot easier than some of the other games. I think it's due to, like, the notoriety system. In the other games, you know, you had notoriety, and when it didn't go away, um, the guards just chased you all the time. And I think they thought, okay, well, you know, you're on separate islands, there's the ships, there's all this different stuff, we can't really use that um, like we did before. But I, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Um, so, you know, it seems like you can have notoriety here, but when it comes to your ship, uh, you don't really have it. I mean, you can have those, um, the bounty hunters, but I think that the notoriety should have remained the same when you have your ship. So your ship attacks the British, now you have like now the british come after you uh more often like they'll be more up to uh attack you same with the spanish and everybody else and then of course you would add on uh the bounty hunters to make things even more difficult uh but they didn't really do that um not that the game is bad uh i just feel like you know people know that ship they recognize that ship um and then when you're in these towns you're notoriety would um, also increase with the things that you do and it, that would remain um, if you come back into town or um, whatever uh, if you didn't take care of it um, of course you could be able to take care of your notoriety as normal but anyways uh, that is uh, that's just a thought that I was having Tell me, tell me what you think in the comments, if you've got the time. Dang it, it got away! Next up, we come to this red brick church, and it's called the Parish Church. Wherever English settlers, merchants, or sailors reached substantial numbers, a parish church generally followed. These charming, practical meeting houses dotted the Caribbean, providing peace and community to the Colonials. And of course, we can sink with a viewpoint at the top of ye old parish church. While we run for our lives from the guards, we get another database entry on the tower we're about to climb. It is the Watchtower. The precautious position of Kingston at the center of both uh, colonial wars and uh, piratical activity required watchtowers that could give as much warning of an attack as possible. While still being pursued, we can climb the tower and sink with the viewpoint on the top. After grabbing this treasure chest, we get another database entry, Introducto Geographica. An image of Jacob's staff, taken from the Introducto, Introductio Geografico by Petrus Apianos. Once belonged to the estate of Peter Vickford. I don't know if I got any of that correct. Please don't judge. After finding everything we could in Kingston, we run into this assassin, Anto. What do you want, Englishman? Edward Canway. I'm here to warn you of danger. And I'm Welsh. You all look the same to me. Why should I need your warning? My life is all danger. I may have brought it on you. <laughs> this means you owe me. As it happens, I could use a man to help free some of my friends. Slaves? You mean brothers, warriors, the hope of the Maroon. Doesn't sound like my business, mate. 
All I need is for you to mingle with your countrymen. Listen to hints for where my friends are held. Fine. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't seem that hard, but we messed up. We told them that we messed up. I think our debt is paid. Sorta. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, yeah, we did mess up and stuff, but we told them about it. Alright, luckily our two guys aren't too far away and we can eavesdrop on them. So we need to go to a warehouse. Not sure which one since that guy was still drunk and he got fired. So, you know, whatever. Next we can catch up with the next two fine gents. Whatever for. I don't know. Make an example of or some such. Well, what did he do? Does he need to do anything? Sometimes examples just have to be made. Hey, now isn't that just a trick? Hi. In a bus, one of the Maroons' favorite raiding posts. I no doubt that Foreman and a constant runaways among my laborers. Followed. We must warn the others. <laughs> Good tackle. You got the information I need, mate. No! I've heard of your kind, assassin! Don't hurt me! All I want to know is where this slave is. Do you know of anyone being held? Especially... Please! Let me live! My wife and children! Come on, then! Out with it! Look near the windmill! See? Was that so hard? Uh, Edward, keeping guys alive. He's gonna go back to his buddies and tell them all about it. Look, I don't like finishing them off either, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Nah, I'm just kidding. Or am I? We can head back to Anto and see what he has to say about the situation. I found your men. And I found where his brothers are kept. Help me release them. No, mate. I've settled my debt. Meddling with slaves is none of my affair. I doubt there's even a Templar behind it all. All affairs of freedom are assassin's affairs. What is your price? What? A man without principle must be moved by coin. How much do you need? There is a key I'm looking for. Belongs to a set I've been stripping off Templars. The Templar keys? I thought they'd been destroyed. I'm not the only one who knows about them, then. If we find it, it's yours. You have a deal. Let's go get your friends. Anything for them keys. The drunks and whores you called friends might help you now. Or we can do it the hard way. We can't, can't free them yet. I was hoping to just do it quickly, but... Uh, yeah, probably should have done it a little bit more stealth. 
assassin like. Alright, and then we can release these guys and they shall be liberated. We have two other sets of guys to, uh, or just Thank one you, guy to, uh, to my bureau. free up. So let's head on to the next one. At last, go to the bureau. <clears throat> you must exercise caution. The area will be well guarded. You know how this works. Take your position. Very well, we'll take a different approach this time. Ow. Have fun dealing with those three. Bye. Where to next? Uh, that's enough work for one night. Or do you grow fond of it? But that's it. No Templar. What about the key? The Templar did not show himself. You will have your key next time. No, Anto. There is no next time. When you discover your conscience, or admit how badly you want the key, there will be a next time. This guy's good. Anto here. Manipulative, I tell ya. After wandering around for a bit, we can decide to meet Anto in the morning. Hopefully he doesn't gloat. You returned. Have you brought your conscience? I want my key. Patience is a virtue. Expecting company. You may have your key sooner than you think. Help us defend the Bureau. The men we freed will help. I do understand, though. It is the last key. Edward's excited. You guys are going the wrong way. <laughs> Just destroy everybody. Doesn't matter who you are, friend or foe. You're taking in that dust, gas, smoke, whatever it is. And now we're pulling out the guns. The next wave, he says. Alright, I guess we can do that. Here they are. Assembling. That one's thinned out. Next one. Just around the corner here. Where are they? They must have made it inside. That lady's probably pooping herself. Um, oh, come on. Alright, well, here they come, I guess. Well, we thinned them out, I think. Uh, what was that? 369? So. Attack, now it's Eliminate as many as you can before the next Maybe week. four. Alright. 369 again. Come on, dude. Reload. We have 12 seconds to do this. 12 seconds. Seven. Uh, six now. Hopefully, we can get even more. I guess not. Edward, I am glad you showed up when you did. I'm sorry I have no key to give you, but... No, the key can wait. Whoever did this, I want to teach them a lesson. The Templar's name is Kenneth Abraham. He's part of an ongoing war with the Maroons. But we have held strong and will not be defeated. Let me devise a plan. 
I don't know if that would have went out that way. I feel like Edward would have been kind of mad about it. He really only wanted the key. He has no reason to be involved with this. Because these guys came and attacked the Bureau, he had a big change of heart. I doubt it. Either way, we can set out and return to him. Anto, that is. And it turns out he's in a market. Let's talk to him. I have a plan, but it won't be easy. Ibrahim is well connected and his pockets are deep. But we have located a man in his inner circle. We will tail him until he reveals our target. Let me bring him to his end. Here he comes now. I think that was probably the plan, Edward. Let's tail the... It says guard, but he looks a little more fancy than just a regular guard. You're not blending in, Anto. Blend, my friend. Give us the upper hand. Stop, baby. So I say, you hear that horn, you're in trouble. Something about that. Well, I guess our cover's blown, but at least we have our man. He seems to be walking away pretty calmly according to the map, even though. Ouch. He took a bullet and got back up. It was pretty good. And that one knocked him right down. Come on, dude. What do you got? Pulled out the blade at the last second, huh? Human shield. I missed that one. Come on, dude. And I died. I died to, to Kenneth. 
kind of a person dies to a Kenneth? In the history... It's no mistake, it's been harder to defeat than the weak came before him. Uh, in the history of histories, no one has ever died from a Kenneth. I unfortunately alerted the guards again, but in a last ditch effort, before I died, I go for the kill. Come on, dude. And he gets killed by his own buddies. Hunter, how many years have we fought? Your men in the mountains with no weapons to speak of, and my army resplendent. And yet you live, and I die. You lack the conviction to win. There it is. We gotta get out of here before we die. Before we unlock our little caged armor, we can do some contracts. A plantation master in the North Fields is known to be an unusually cruel and sadistic slave trader. Kill him. And I, as unfortunate as it is, I do agree with Mr. Kenway that slaves really aren't his issue. Um, not to say that he shouldn't do anything about it, it's wrong. Um, but in the game, I don't, it seems like it's very geared toward that. Actually, in this game, um... In this one, the previous one with, uh, uh, in Louisiana, that one, and I believe the DLC to this one are all kind of based around that. Um, and it's a coincidence that it just so happened to be in the years that it is, uh, was, uh, when this game was made. Kind of a little weird... Weird coincidence with everything that was going on at the time. Um, again, uh, I don't think that it's wrong that he does that kind of stuff. I just think that as the character, he probably wouldn't care. Yeah, take that, you douchebag. That'll teach you for being mean to people and cruel and stuff. Oh, he's gonna get beat by these guys. Fight back, dude! They're just torturing him. I can get him from here. Do it then. I right, took one on. He took one out. Bullets missed him. He's doing extremely well. He's still going. Holy cow! I got my money on this guy. Oh, I <laughs> think the grenade's gonna get him. Oh yeah, I forgot they blow up like 10 minutes later. Killed by the captain. And we must go to the next assassin contract. Alright. The leader of a military outpost in the northwest is a confirmed Templar. Kill him. All right, this one makes more sense. Um, it doesn't necessarily now. He's got his key, so it doesn't really matter. But I think that he uh, has come to the mind that he should be helping out the assassins. And I suppose if you think about it in Anto's way... Uh, just helping out anybody is helping out the assassins, but I I still don't know. It seems a little bit of a stretch. Um, and I guess if the assassins stand for freedom and this and that, it makes sense. But again, for the character, I still don't 
necessarily think that it does. I mean, he's a pirate, he's a thief, you know, he probably wouldn't necessarily care. He doesn't seem to have that much of a conscience. You know, a little bit, but not, like, a lot. I've heard it said our commander calls Captain Wood Rogers a friend as well. The man who rescued Silk? That Captain Rogers. Aye. <laughs> These darts make it just so easy. And with that, it's uh, on to the next one. A rather psychotic slave trader has been spotted doing his rotten business in the heart of the city. Kill him again with the slave trader. Uh, all right, we'll go and help them out. The more people freed is um, more people to the cause. But Edward doesn't necessarily support the cause yet if he's going to. So again, I don't know why he gives a crap. I get that he's helping out the assassins and he feels that he should considering he wronged them earlier. Slaves and doing slave stuff is probably not his thing. I also believe that Ubisoft um, does fall into the political ideology of the times. Whatever's going on, they're gonna hint at it in their games, if not kind of fully go at it in their games. Um, whether that's right, wrong, or the other doesn't really matter. I still like them. They're good games. And it was an issue at the time. Um, and I think it's kind of cool that he helps the slaves out. Uh, I just don't think that at this point in time, it makes sense for the character of Edward Kenway. At the same time, you could say, like uh, he and uh, Kid were talking about, if money's his only motivation, um, then it makes sense. He's going to do whatever. It doesn't matter. He's going to do the task because they're going to pay him for the task. But if that's the case, he might as well work for somebody else because they're probably going to pay him more. That being said, I mean, I don't really think that we need the money. We're probably the richest person in Kingston. Okay, maybe not. <clears throat> Gotta be close. A faction of pirates camped near the church has been smuggling illegal goods in the heart of the city to the wrong people. Kill their leader. It would almost make more sense to skip that whole um, informational part. Just say... Go here, kill the leader of these guys, and we're going to pay you. <laughs> like, like, I don't know. Edward doesn't care about his goods. As a matter of fact, Edward would probably take his goods. Again, easy as pie. I want pie now. We have confirmed that a certain British officer is terrorizing the villagers with his unit. 
he can usually be found near the port. Well, hopefully he doesn't terrorize me with his unit. I'm sure we could get him for public indecency, though. Making our way over to the port, we can hear some conversation. Oh, these darts, I tell you. I cannot get over them. I'm sure that they won't have them in the next game or something. Next up, we have a corrupt judge living in Port Royal. Has sent one too many innocent men to the gallows. Find and kill him. Yeah, sometimes you got corrupt judges. And they need to be put down. That's today, even. All right, so I have discovered that Port Royal is actually across the whatever this is, the water here. And there are some other things that I discovered. One, I couldn't get into this red area, so that was going to come later. But on top of that, there's a little um, paper right here on this boat. So there's actually a little bit more to collect that I didn't know about. Either way, we can head on over to Port Royal. Before heading to Port Royal, we can go onto this lightly guarded ship and grab this uh, little secret it has for us. And that secret would be a drawing. Some notes of Magellan's ship. Detail from a map by Ortoleus depicting Magellan's ship Victoria from the estate of Peter Beckford. Next we can learn about Anto. Anto was born in 1670 and we don't know when he died exactly. Seems a common occurrence uh, of this time. Born to the Ashanti tribe in the Akan region of West Africa. Anto was sold into slavery as a young man and sent to Jamaica. He soon escaped with the help of the legendary warrior Cujo and founded a maroon community near Kingston. There he quickly established a good relationship with the local traders and began coordinating plantation raids to free slaves and build an army. Although he ran the Assassin Bureau, Anto's priority was always to free slaves from captivity. His name translates to born after the death of his father. Uh, nice little tidbit there. J.M. Next up we can look at Kenneth Abrahams with an S. This is the guy that killed us before. Born 1675 and died in 1715. Born to an upper class family and educated in boarding schools from the age of five. Kenneth Abraham. Is it Abrahams or Abraham? Because there, there's difference now. Uh, learned to fight for himself at an early age upon graduation. He entered the army and rose through the ranks, finally meeting the rank of commander. His embrace of order and discipline drew him into the fold of the Templar Order, which offered him influence beyond that offered by his military career. From the age of 30, he ascended his ranks in parallel to those of his military career by devoting himself to the promotion of uh, order and peace. He remained until his death determined to rid the world of unprecedented and disorderly elements. Note sounds like a fun guy, signed RL. 
Do order and peace bore you? Are you overworked? I can set up an appointment with our in-house therapist. ML. Peaceful? Orderly? Me? Never. I love this job. Signed, R.L. Going back to shore and taking a boat over, we are now in Kingston's Port Royal area. We can head to our target's location. Turns out the judge is more perceptive than most, but not as agile. We... If we didn't kill him, we paralyzed him. After we get done hiding from the guards and whatnot, we can collect all that we can here on the Port Royal side of Kingston. And we can start with this Animus Fragment. We can find a little secret on this side, the Aberdeen Bestery Phoenix Detail. Image of a rising phoenix from the Aberdeen Bestiary. Uh, likely insignificant or possibly faked, taken from the estate of Peter Beckford. Next up, we can get a good look at the surrounding area by climbing up this church where uh, we can synchronize with a viewpoint. Getting a good look at the Port Royal location. While trying to get to another piece of paper, we run straight in to Fort Charles. Unfortunately for us, we can't get to the door. So let's uh, read a little bit about Fort Charles. The only Port Royal fort that survived the earthquake of 1692, built circa 1660, it is made of brick with gun ports for its cannons. Concerned about a Spanish attack, and lacking manpower to defend Fort Charles, the administrators of Port Royal welcomed pirates and buccaneers to the town. The pirates gained a safe haven, and Port Royal gained plenty of manpower for defense. Next up, we can open a box and find the sacred theory of the Earth. A Comprehensive Analysis of the Earth and Its Vagaries, written by theologian Thomas Burnett, taken from Peter Beckford's estate. Next up, on a nearby watchtower just outside Fort Charles, we can sink with a viewpoint. On a small ship moored outside of the port, we can find the Epistola de Magneta, and it's an early draft of what we would today call a perpetual motion machine. This drawing is presumed to have been taken from Peter Beckford's legendary collection of eph ephemera. Turns out we missed the Port Royal Tower, we didn't miss it, we got it in a viewpoint, but reading about it here, this tower's name is a reminder that Fort Charles was originally built to protect Port Royal, whose destruction in the earthquake of 1692 led to the founding of Kingston. Next we find ourselves back in Kingston, and in that restricted area I didn't think I could get to. Turns out it was very much I could get to it. Um, and we run into uh, Lawrence Prinz Manor, which is gated off for now. Lawrence Prinz was an incredibly successful slave trader who spent the better part of his 80s uh, transporting human cargo from the west of Africa to the West Indies. 
Near the end of his life, he lived in semi-retirement on land he purchased near Kingston. One of his most active slave ships, the Win Winda, was famously captured by the pirate Sam Bellamy. Then there's some notes. Do we have to mention slave trading? It's such a downer, ML. It's kind of part of history in the region, JM. Yeah, but folks want to have fun, right? Not think about social injustice and stuff, RL. I agree, it was part of history. It is part of history. There's nothing we can do to change that. We just need to move on and make sure that it never happens again. And uh, hopefully fix what's left of it. And mm, uh, make sure that the people that are trying to bring it back, if there are any, or continue to do it today, uh, our stop. Before moving on in the main quest, we find ourselves at Saranilla, a different island, with a plantation and a Mayan ruin, uh, or a stale, uh, if you will, if that's how you pronounce it, and uh, some assassin contracts. We can do them before moving on to our next main objective. Next up, as you can see, we've found our way to the Mayan Stele to get our keystone. Not the beverage, but uh, an actual stone that happens to also be a key. And there it is. After we're done with that, we can, don't mind the dead bodies, loot the warehouse on the island. We actually get a hundred metal from this one, so this one's not actually a terrible haul and we can move on with life life being an assassin contract stay out of combat for 500 rias a fugitive guilty of many heinous and indiscriminate crimes against innocent civilians is hiding from authorities on a nearby island. Kill him to ensure he never harms anyone again. Making our way to the nearby island, we can see several guards around. We need to find our target and kill him. After some time searching, we can hear some conversation. Now suddenly we see him and we can make our move. It almost seemed like the guards were distracted by the cannon fire in the distance. Lucky for us if it was the case. Not getting through here. Not through there either. That's okay. It's, there's tons of areas I can get back out to my boat. Ship. Our next contract says this arrogant captain is guilty of attacking many civilian ships and subjecting them to torture. Stop his acts of savagery. I suppose we can do that. And there he is. I mean, I pulled the gun, but... No treasure, no rest. He's a great guy, it sounds like. Um, I, I, we weren't going to shoot him. No way. I must have shot somebody else to the trees. Alright, you're going down, brother. Ow, maybe I'm going down, brother. Come on. Human shield, maybe. Don't slap me, dude. Alright. You're still going down. 
Yeah. And hopefully we can get out of here without being shot and killed. Ooh, almost. Yeah, success. Now that we're all done collecting, we can finally start our main objective. But unfortunately, we are all out of time, and we're going to end this episode right here and start up fresh with the main quest. Thank you so much for watching.